Did you know there's a fear stopping 75% of God's people from being used by God? It's preventing them from walking in their calling and it's stopping them from experiencing the peace and the love and the joy and the fulfillment that God has for them. What is this called? It almost stopped me. But I give glory to God that God used my father to get me out of that phobia and to push me into the calling that God has given me in this life. What is this fear called? It's called glossophobia. And what is it? It's the fear of public speaking. Did you know that this fear is battling your calling? Because many Christians ask, what is my calling? What is my purpose? God has one purpose and one calling for every Christian. For any person that has been born again, for any person that has put their saving faith into Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who gave his life for us on the cross and resurrected on the third day and is to come, who is going to return one day, for every person that has trusted in Jesus as their Savior, we all have this one similar calling. It is the supreme calling on this earth. And do you know what it is? To lift up the name of Jesus and to testify and to witness about what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. That he came to reconcile fallen man, sinful man, back to a holy God. There was not a man, not a woman on God's green earth that could reconcile any person back to the Lord. Because we all have sinned, like the Bible says, all fall short of the glory of God. There is not one, no, not one that searches after the Lord. But Jesus, the Son of God, he came down to this earth through a virgin. Why through a virgin? Because if he would have been born through a man, he would have had the sinful nature also. Jesus did not have the sinful nature. Why? He had the nature of God because he is God in the flesh. He came through Mary to this earth. He did not have the sinful nature. He lived the perfect life. He never sinned. And because he didn't have the sinful nature, because he never sinned, he was able to be our sacrifice. He was able to be our replacement on that cross. And when he was on that cross, God, the Bible says that God put all the sins of humanity on him, past, present, and future. All the sins of every human being that has ever been born, that was born at that time, or that ever will be born. All the sins of humanity, God counted them on Jesus. And for that moment on the cross, God looked at Jesus and treated Jesus as the worst sinner ever ever to walk on this earth. And why is that important? Because the perfect, holy son of God, when he was there on that cross, God treated him and counted him as the worst sinner that had ever walked on this earth. And the Bible says that he took the punishment of sin because the punishment of sin is death. He took the punishment of sin. Now the beautiful thing is, this is the word gospel. The word gospel means good news. This is why the gospel is good news. Because God treated him and judged him as the worst sinner ever. Now because of that payment, the price has been paid. The price of sin, the bill of sin has been paid by Jesus, the son of God. Now the good news is that because of him, now we, the same way God treated him and looked at him as the worst sinner, now you and me, God will look at us through Jesus Christ. God will look at us as holy, righteous, and as children. Of the living God the same way he took our place on that cross is the same way now he puts us in the place as children of God and do you know what that's called that's called good news and you and me and any Christian that has put their faith in Jesus has the calling to proclaim to confess to share to be a witness of this good news now, can you see, can you understand a little better why the number one fear of many people and especially of Christians is public speaking? It's the fear of rejection. Do you know and do you understand now why many Christians, when they think about sharing the gospel with somebody, it causes them anxiety and fear and they feel paralyzed? Because the enemy wants you to be scared of sharing the most powerful message in the whole universe this is the most powerful message in the whole universe the bible says that angels wish 
Angels, angels, the Bible says, wish that they could come and look upon what you and I are doing. You and me have the calling and have the anointing to be witnesses and to declare the gospel of Jesus, the Son of God. The Bible says that angels wish they could come down here and preach the gospel. But that is a blessing. And that is a gift that God has given you. Don't let this fear stop you from being used by God. I want to tell you that God has already done all the hard work. God has done all the hard work. When God puts somebody in your path, whether it be at the place where you study, the place where you work, the place where you shop, the place where you vacation, because even in a vacation, God will put somebody in your path. Wherever you are, you have the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ, that he came to reconcile a fallen, sinful human race back to a holy, loving God. We were broken. We were falling away from him. But the Son of God came and reconciled us back to the Lord. That is good news. And it wants to stop you from being used. And it wants to stop you from walking in your purpose. This fear of speaking. This anxiety, this trembling that you feel when somebody is there and you feel that tug in your heart from the Holy Spirit to speak to them about the gospel. But then you say, no, what if they reject me? What if they get upset? What if they get angry? No, that's a fear. And what is it called again? Glossophobia. Don't let this fear stop you from experiencing and partaking of the fullness and the beauty and the exhilaration and the joy that you are gonna feel when you see people be saved through the gospel i'm telling you god wants to use you and will use you to bring people to salvation and that is an amazing amazing joy that god wants to share with you look what the bible says here in john chapter 4 verse 31 through 42 god has already done all the hard work I want to let you know that when God puts somebody in your path, he's already been dealing with that person. Did you know that the Bible says the Holy Spirit is already here on earth convicting mankind of their sins? You know, my father was saved 31 years ago. But before he was saved 31 years ago, God was trying to reach him 10 years before that and five years before that. God is dealing with people every single day. Why do you think that people feel they're missing something? Why do you think that people feel I'm not living right? I'm missing something. There is a God, but I just don't know the direction. God is already dealing with people and all they need is just for you to go and show them the way. Just tell them the good news. God's already doing all the hard work. He's already getting all the pieces together. Now, some people will reject. Don't get upset. God's going to keep dealing with them. But then some people, you will be amazed of the impact that you will have in their life when you just are obedient and just open your mouth. Just at the level you know of the knowledge you have, just open your mouth and begin to speak about Jesus and the love of God. And what Jesus did for us on the cross. And now he says, come to me all you who are tired and heavy labored. I'll give you rest. You'll be amazed how when you start talking about the rest and forgiveness and salvation that Jesus wants to give. You will be amazed and surprised how some people are going to be totally transformed instantly. But remember, glossophobia, it wants to stop you. Don't let it stop you. But let's see how God has already done all the hard work. In the life of a woman who was an extreme adulterer, extreme promiscuousness was going on in her life. But God had already been dealing with her. And when she got saved, look at the impact that she had on her city. And she was only saved for like a minute. She was only saved for like about a minute. But do you know what this calling has? The calling of being a witness, the calling of speaking the gospel, and we all have this calling. It doesn't matter if you've only been saved a day or a minute. You have this calling to speak the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. When she obeyed and when she just declared what Jesus had done in her life, it doesn't have to be fancy. What Jesus done in her life, when she declared that, her whole town was impacted. This goes to show you, it doesn't matter how many years of seminary you've been to, it doesn't matter how much Bible you know. It doesn't matter how many hours you pray. Now, don't get me wrong. Praying and studying the Bible is good. 
But if you pray for 10 hours and read the Bible for 10 hours, but you never share it, what kind of impact is that going to have on anybody else? But this woman took what she knew from Jesus, what Jesus had done in her life, and she didn't try to convince anybody. She was just speaking it. Hey, this is what Jesus has done in my life. And do you think you're the only person that goes through what you go through? Do you think you're the only person that has the battles that you have? No. There's billions of people on planet Earth. And there's many people who are going through many things just like you. So when you tell them, this is what Jesus has done in my life. This is how Jesus has changed my life. This is what the Bible says Jesus has done for us. Man, that message is going to be extremely impactful. Let's read. Look what the Bible says. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. So his disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. I want to ask you a question. What are you craving? Are you craving a pizza right now? Or are you craving to do the will of God? Don't get me wrong. Craving a certain type of food that you like is not bad. But Jesus, at this point of scripture that we're reading, his disciples were telling him, eat, you got to eat. It's hot. You've been walking all day. He said, I'm already feeling satisfied. I'm already feeling satisfied. Have you ever got good news that maybe you were hungry, upset, sad, but then all of a sudden you just receive good news and all those feelings go away and you're just satisfied? You just have that, that peace in your body, that happiness, that joy in your body because of that good news that you heard, that it just makes hunger and, and anger and frustration just disappear. Have you ever received that type of good news? I have. Jesus was physically hungry, but at this point, he was satisfied. Because this woman that he had ministered to, her whole life was changed. And not only was her whole life changed, but her whole town's life was changed. And Jesus said, I'm not even hungry right now. Like, I'll be hungry right in a minute. I'll be hungry. I know it's going to come back in a minute. I'm going to get back hungry in a minute. But right now, man, I'm so satisfied. I'm just soaking in what God has done. He says, my food is to accomplish his work. Do you not say that there are yet four months, then come the harvest? He says, look, I tell you. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. I want to let you know that God is already dealing with people. The fields are already for harvest. There's people out there that are just waiting for someone to come and speak to them. They don't know the way. They don't know the way, but they just feel something. And that something is the Holy Spirit convicting them. But they don't know about the Holy Spirit. They don't know about Jesus. They don't know about Scripture. And they're just waiting. You are just the missing piece that God wants to use. God wants to use you. He can do it on his own. But God has given you this blessing, this anointing, this calling. God wants to use you just to grab the extension cord that's not plugged in. And God just wants to use you to plug it into the outlet. Just think about them like an outlet lane, unplugged. God wants to use you to grab that person. And connect them into Jesus, and then that power will begin to flow. There's so many people that are just waiting, just waiting for somebody to come and speak to them about Jesus and God and salvation in the gospel. And you will be amazed. And Jesus says the harvest is ready. He said, already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Do you know what Jesus is saying? There's a lot of people who have already done all the hard work. All you got to go do is just pick the harvest. That holds true for me and you today. Other Christians, other Christians were the ones that now through them, we have the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly. Because of other Christians, now you and me share freedoms to be able to preach the gospel. Because of other Christians hundreds of years ago who came from England and came to America seeking for religious freedom, now you and me, we have these freedoms. Because of people who have translated the Bible from Hebrew and Aramaic, now those people that translated the Bible from different languages and now to English, now because of those people's hard work, now you and me can read the scripture. What Jesus said back in the day holds true today. He said, other people have already done the hard work. All you need to go and do is pick the fruit. That's an amazing blessing. You just need to go pick the fruit. Other people have already ground, hit up the ground. They've already planted the seed. They've watered the seed. they cultivated the seed. Other people have done all the hard work. All you and me need to go do is pick the fruit. That's it. Just pick the fruit. Jesus said, there's other people that have already done the hard work. Look what else he continues to say. Look what happens when that woman that he preached to, 
went back to her town. She was an adulterer. She was a fornicator. And Jesus preached her. Jesus said, if you trust in me, from within you rivers of living water will flow. That's what she wanted. She wanted peace. Did you know that that's what most of humanity wants? Most humanity just wants peace. Most humanity would trade millions of dollars just to have some peace. This woman, all she wanted was peace. She just wanted to have some type of enjoyment. She was looking for enjoyment everywhere else. But then Jesus introduced her to true, true peace. The peace of God. And she found this peace of God and she went to her town and she spread it. She became an evangelist. She became somebody who was witnessing. You might say, I don't have a YouTube channel. You might say, I don't have a pulpit to preach from. You don't need that to be impactful in the kingdom of God. Did you know how me right now, how I'm preaching through this YouTube channel? Let me show you. My father and mother were reached. You know how they were reached? By somebody who knocked on their door. Who is this man that knocked on their door and told my mother the gospel message when my father was a drug addict? Addicted to drugs and alcohol, trying to change, had been to rehabs and programs and, and all these different types of psychologists trying to help him and he could never change. Who was this man that come and knocked at our door and told us that Jesus can change anyone's life? I don't know. I never saw him after he knocked on our door that day. Because of one man that didn't have a pulpit. Because of one man that wasn't waiting for a following on YouTube. Because of one man that remains anonymous, I don't know his name, I don't know who he was. Because of that one man that didn't get fame, didn't get recognition. Now I'm here preaching the gospel. Now you're there hearing the gospel. Do you see how impactful you can be when you just obey and walk in the calling of God? You have no idea. You cannot even imagine what God is going to do through your life when you walk in obedience. This woman wasn't preaching to her town for some type of recognition. She was just sharing the joy, the peace that she had. And look what happens. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this indeed is the Savior of the world. She took what she received, and all she did was share it. Did some people reject her? Pretty sure. But the Bible says that many people from her town were saved. Many people. In two days, about 50% of her whole town was saved through Jesus Christ. In two days. In two days. I don't want to risk missing out on this opportunity. It might not happen every time I share the gospel. But if it just happens once. If it just happens once. That's a great blessing. And God wants you to share in this blessing. If that's you, if you want to share in this blessing, say, Lord, I'm going to walk in obedience. Give me the ability to walk in obedience. Lord, I want to share in this blessing, in this joy of being used to spread the gospel. Do you want that? Say, Lord, I want that. Strengthen me in Jesus' mighty name. Now that you know God's already doing the hard work. The people are just waiting. Some people will reject. Don't worry about them. God will continue to deal with them. But there's people out there that you're going to be amazed and shocked how quickly that God will begin to do great and mighty things in their life simply because you are an obedient messenger. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If this video encouraged you, if this video blessed you, and you want to continue to hear more videos like this, do me a favor. Press the subscribe button. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. And if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Super Thanks are always greatly appreciated. They're a great blessing to my life. Also, if you want to show another way of appreciation, you can do so by channel memberships. Channel memberships, 
There's a link in my description. You can click it if that's what you're interested in. And when you become a channel member, channel members receive special privileges, special perks like channel badges, channel stickers, and they have a little badge. Every time they leave a comment, it shows up in the comment section. And I also post videos for channel members only. And with that being said, this Saturday, Lord willing, this Saturday, I'm gonna be posting a video for channel members. It's gonna be the outline or the way, the technique, how I share the gospel. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you say, I wanna learn how to share the gospel, I wanna learn how to teach or preach or give a Bible study, if that's something that you wanna learn how to do, I'm gonna be making a video of how I do it. So if that's something how you're interested in, become a channel member, the link is in the description, and this Saturday, Lord willing, that video will be posted. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing, and click on one of these videos to continue to be encouraged. Have a blessed day.